Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jessica. Thanks for clicking on this video today. I'm a YouTube creator who loves creating panning content and as I'm wrapping up the year of panning for 2023, I'm thinking about the future and thinking about what I wanna pan in the next year. So that's what this video is all about is I'm gonna go through everything that I've pulled out of my collection that I either want to finish up completely or focus on during the next year. And if you're interested in seeing what those items are, please stay tuned. Let's get right on into the video. So I'm gonna start by going through all the items that I wanna finish up completely. And I don't have very many of them. I've been painting for a couple of years now. My collection's gotten down to the point where I don't have a ton of extras or duplicates in my collection. So the items that I want to use up and just like pare down in my collection are getting to be a lot lower than the past, which is great, which is my goal all along, which is why I started this channel. So I'm happy about that. But that just means that my painting goals are a little bit different moving forward. The first item I want to finish next year is the Cody Airspun Loose Powder, and this is the reason why. I don't even need to focus on a loose powder. This is the only loose powder I currently have in my collection, but it is falling apart. The packaging is just splitting open at every point. It's splitting open on the base and also on the lid, which is very annoying. I don't know why the last packaging I had of this did that as well, and that is so frustrating. I haven't even had this in my collection for very long and it's been sitting safely in my drawer. It's not like I'm abusing this thing or taking it traveling. It just like split simultaneously on its own. So if you've had some more issues with this, let me know. I'm annoyed about it, but for that reason, it's gotta go. I'm gonna try and finish it up, hopefully in the first half of the next year. And I've already been depotting the powder in here into another container just so I don't have to deal with this mess. I also have a foundation that I'd like to focus on and hopefully finish up. This is from Clinique, their Even Better Clinical Foundation. And I love this foundation, but I totally bought the wrong shade, which is really frustrating. I wish I had noticed in time to exchange this for a different shade, but for now I'm kind of stuck with this and I'm gonna try and make it work. The shade for this foundation is just a little bit too orange for me. So I did buy a blue color corrector to mix in with this to hopefully tone down the orange and make it more wearable for me. So that is when I love to use up. I spent a lot of money on it. It's like a 40 something dollar foundation. and I I don't want it to just sit in my drawer and get wasted. So that is gonna be a focus. I think I should be able to do it if I fix it up. I also wanna finish up this concealer from NYX. This is probably the oldest concealer I have in my collection right now. And I already have it about almost halfway empty. So that one shouldn't be too difficult. This is not my favorite concealer, but I'll be happy to use it up. And that should not be difficult for me to do next year. I didn't think I was going to, but I did decide to try and focus on a blush next year and finish one up. I was focusing on a four blush quad the last year and made a lot of progress on it, but I neglected my other blushes a lot. So I decided that if I'm going to try and pan a blush, I might as well pan a little sample blush. This is from the Balm and the shade is Alternative Rock, I believe. And it's a pretty shade. It's very wearable for me on a daily basis. It can go with a lot of different looks. And it's such a small, tiny thing that I think I should be able to empty it out in the course of the year and also get some use on the other blushes in my collection as well. I also already have a little bit of a head start on this blush. It was in my travel makeup bag for a long time. So it got quite a bit of use and I think it'll be fun to just track a blush with all of you. And if you've been here a while, you know I love panty lip products. So I have quite a collection of lip products I'd like to finish up this year. That's a category in my makeup collection that I'm really trying to get down to a smaller number. So I have a few, I'll just go through them quickly. I have this one from Rimmel London. It's the Kate Moss series and it's in the shade 32 and it's just like a really pretty peachy pink shade. And I probably have used like a good like quarter of this lipstick already. And my plan is to focus on the shade in the spring and summertime, and hopefully it won't be too difficult for me to empty that one. I have another lipstick from CoverGirl. This is the shade Sultry Sienna. And I'm not exactly sure what this line is called, but I really, really love this line of lipstick. You can tell by the packaging, I guess, if they still have this packaging. I don't know. They have a lot of different formulas, I think, in the same type of bullet packaging. But I love this shade. It's a very pretty, like, brownie nude, perfect for the fall time. It almost has like a pinky mobbish look to it a little bit, but it's a beautiful shade, a very much everyday shade for me. And I don't think I'll have any problem panning this one. It's also probably about almost halfway finished at this point. So this is just a little motivating factor for me to get it used up and out of my collection. And it's getting to be a couple years old, so it's time for me to focus on it. I have two high-end lipsticks here. This is gonna be a bit more of a challenge. This one is from Kat Von D. This is the shade Cathedral. And I think a friend gave this to me a long time ago. I've barely touched it, but it's a really pretty nude. I just kind of discovered it in my drawer the other day. And I think this will be really fun to work on. It's actually very similar to Sultry, but it's more of like a 
deeper tone and matte instead of that like sheeny finish. So that one is just really gorgeous and I don't even know how old it is. So I really want to focus on this one and just give it the use that it deserves. It's a very nice lipstick and I don't want it just wasting away in my drawer any longer. And another lipstick that was another gift. I have no idea how old it is, but it is from Lancome. Such beautiful bullet packaging. The shade is called, it's just a number, 246, I guess. But it's like a really pretty bright pink shade. And this is another one that will be fun to wear in the spring and summertime. It's going to be more of a challenging shade for me to focus on. I don't wear a lot of bright pinks like that. But again, it's just really old. And I don't know if I'll finish this one up completely, but I'd love to get like a big chunk of use on such a beautiful product that I have not gotten to appreciate. I have this lip gloss from L'Oreal that I would love to finish. I know I'm quite close. So I definitely just want to remind myself to focus on this in 2024 and get it used up completely. This is the plumping lip gloss formula from L'Oreal. The writing's all worn off, but I really do like the plumping effects and I love the shade. I just don't love the smell. It kind of smells like chemicals. It's supposed to be minty, but it doesn't smell good at all. And it's not a very pleasurable experience. I think that lipstick and lip colors really should smell nice. You want to enjoy that smell since it's so close to your nose. And this one is not so pleasant. So I would love to use that up and just, you know, focus on other things in my collection. When I let it settle, it's pretty low in the tube. It's like right around there. And I can definitely see windowing on the side when I move my wand around. So I know it's getting close to empty and I shouldn't have too much trouble doing that early in the next year. Another lip product is more of like a balm type product. This is from e.l.f. These are their Hydrating Core Lip Shines. And I really do like this, but again, the smell and the taste just leaves something lacking. Not that I'm eating it, but I know there's better out there. So that is it in the swatch. It's very sheer. It actually looks beautiful on the lips. It's nice and hydrating. And I've gotten a good amount of use on this already. This is it all the way used up. I probably used almost half of it at this point. And I shouldn't have a problem finishing that pretty quickly once I put the effort in. And this last item is from ColourPop. It's been banging around in my everyday makeup drawer. So it's a little bit worse for wear, but the product inside is great. So this is a lip scrub from ColourPop. It's in a vanilla scent. And I just want to remind myself to use this because it does really help with my lips especially in the winter to exfoliate them so that my lip products sit nicely on my lips. They're not all crusty and dusty and prepared for makeup. So that is one that I would just like to use up and just remind myself because otherwise I forget to reach for these and then they just sit around for a long time. These next group of products are all things that I would like to focus on this year, but I don't necessarily plan on finishing them up entirely. Maybe a couple of them I will, but I just want to get a lot of use on them this year. So the first one is from NARS. This is the Laguna Cream Bronzer, and I would love to hit pan on this bronzer this year. I just got it, I think, about a year ago, and I really love it. It was in my deck of panning project for some time, so it has a nice little dip on it. I think I used it 30 times in that project, and I would just love to use this a lot during the next year and give it the love it deserves. It was a very expensive product and I don't want it to fall into that category of like not using it because it cost me so much money, like saving it for special occasions. I should use those items that I spend so much money on on a regular basis and enjoy them. So this one will come into my project at some point, not sure when, and I think hitting pan on it maybe will take me a couple months, so I should plan accordingly. So that's the first one I wanna focus on. Another bronzer I wanna focus on is from Hourglass. This is one of their ambient lighting bronzers. This is in the shade Radiant Bronze Light, and I already have a pan on this bronzer, which is amazing. I think I panned it in a project a couple years ago, but I would like to just work on this throughout the year and see how big I can expand that pan. Maybe I'll finish this bronzer. That's a big maybe, but we'll see. I'm going to be excited just to watch this pan expand with everyone and get use on this very, very expensive bronzer. I love this bronzer. I would repurchase this bronzer if I needed a bronzer, which right now I don't. I'm trying to like really use up my bronzers and pare down in that category, but I'm really going to enjoy reaching for this one in 2024. I would love to have a pan on all of my highlighters, so I'm going to try and focus on this one from Becca this year. This is the shade Prosecco Pop, and it is one of the only highlighters left in my collection without a pan in it. So I'm going to try and focus on this one this year, try and hit pan on it. I've got a ways to go. This is probably my least used highlighter in my collection, but it's a beautiful golden shade. There it is in the swatch. Really nice on my skin tone, and I can pretty much wear this tone of highlighter any time of the year. I'd also like to hit pan on this primer. This is from L'Oreal. This is their Magic Perfecting Base. And this is my favorite pore filling primer that I found from the drugstore. And I just want to remember to use this one because it really does help my makeup lay smoothly on my skin when I use it. So here's what it's looking like today. And I'd love to have 
at least a pan on this one by the end of the year. I think I should be able to do that if I just remember to use it. I might be going crazy with lip products, but I also have three other lip products I'd like to focus on this year. These two are the Now Retired Too Faced Melted Lipsticks. These were like the cream liquid lipsticks. They don't dry down like a liquid lipstick, but they are a cream lipstick in the tube. So these are really beautiful shades and they're getting quite old in my collection. And I've been doing this with my cream lipsticks over the past couple of years, just focusing on them as much as I possibly can and then decluttering them at the end of the year because it can go bad a little bit faster than others. So this little mini one I have here is Chihuahua, a really beautiful brownie nude. I think I shouldn't have a problem wearing that on a regular basis. And then this shade here, Melted Fig, is like more of like a purpley toned lipstick, which I love wearing those tones. So I would love to challenge myself to focus on these this year, bring them to the deck of painting, put a high use goal on them or something like that and just see what damage I can do because I know these are getting to be quite old in my collection. And I also have this lip crayon from NARS. This came as a birthday gift from NARS years ago and I have so many hot pink shades like this in my collection and I love wearing hot pinks but in no way do I need five or six hot pink lipstick shades in my lipstick collection. So I'm just trying to kind of whittle down that color. And I think this one should be pretty easy to do if I just put the effort in because of just like the amount of product that's in that stick. It's not nearly as much product as would be in a bullet. So I'm gonna go for it. This is the shade Let's Go Crazy and it is their Velvet Matte Lip Pencil is what they call it. And it's not like my favorite type of lip product to wear, but maybe I will find that I enjoy it more than I think I do once I actually just like, Put an effort into reaching for that you know i'm just always reaching for bullets i'm not really reaching for lip crayons like this when i want a lipstick just me so i'm gonna really force myself to use it and see what i can do with this shade in this year and kind of in a similar vein i have these two remaining products that are just things i do not reach for and i would love to kind of challenge myself a little bit this year and get some use on them so the first one is a jumbo eyeshadow pencil this is from nyx and this is the shade iced mocha and look at this packaging like does this indicate how old this product is I'm not even sure how I came to own this pencil. It just showed up in my life somehow, but it's a really beautiful like taupey brown shimmer shade. And I think if I just challenge myself a little bit, it would be really fun to use a shade like this. So I might just bring this in again to deck of panning for like a 30 or 50 maybe use goal and just see what I can do with it over the course of the year, see how much smaller I can get it by the year's end. And if I'm not enjoying it, just get it out of my collection and declutter it. No reason to keep it around if it's not something I'm gonna reach for. And last, I have this kind of like eyeshadow polish is what they call it. This is from Kaylin and it's basically a eyeshadow pigment. So it comes with like this little applicator that comes out like that and then like pigment is all coated on that little sponge and it's really beautiful very shimmery very pigmented and i used to love to wear this on the inner corner just as like my little inner corner highlight and there this is very very sparkly very shiny and this is another one that i just never remember to reach for and i want to try and get some use on it this year so here it is in the packaging you can kind of see the line of where the product is now if i can get it flat yeah, it's just about there in the packaging. So it's like a little bit below the halfway point, which bodes well. And I just wanna see what I can do with this one in the year. I think I should be able to make some good progress on it if I really put my mind to it. These next items are all sample items that I wanna use up this year. I decided to round up every single sample beauty product that I have in my collection. And I wanna finish them in 2024 and try not to acquire too many other samples in the meantime, because I'm just not always a fan of having all these samples around. It is a nice way to try new products and sometimes I have found products I really like by getting samples of them but it's just gotten to a point where I have an accumulation of them and I want them out and just bring in the new if I am gonna get some new. So real quickly, I'm gonna go through them. Some of them are just little packets like this. This is from Estee Lauder. It's a cleanser, their two-in-one foam cleanser. I have this packet of a strengthening hair mask from Oribe. I really should use that because my hair needs all the strengthening hair masks that it can get. I have these two universal peels from Dr. Dennis Gross. These packets especially, I'll just like put them in a drawer and forget about them and they just take up all this clutter and space. I have this little like shampoo set from Fakai. It's a detox shampoo, an apple cider rinse, and then an apple cider scrub exfoliant for your scalp. So these are good for travel. I should remember to bring them and use them when I travel. And now for a couple of little tubes, I have this Shiseido Clarifying Cleansing Foam. This one's been around for quite some time. I definitely need to focus on that one first. I believe this came from a hotel. 
<laughs> this is the Indie Lee Purifying Face Wash. I don't know if I'm gonna use that. Maybe for my body, I'll use it. This is from Tula Skincare. This is their 24 seven moisture cream. And I have used quite a bit of this already. This has been in my travel makeup bag as my daily moisturizer. And I have just a little bit left of it. So that should be no problem. From Pixie, I have this Skin Treats Glow Mud Cleanser. So that should be fun to use. It's just kind of like a really purifying mud facial cleanser. I have this body lotion from Dionys. It's a goat milk skincare and I used a hand cream of this same product or maybe it was a foot cream but I really really enjoyed it so I am excited to use up that one. From Verb I have a body wash. This came actually with a set when I purchased another Verb product and I don't really use body washes but this is another thing that's been in my travel bag that I just need that final push to finish up and get out. Another item that always comes with me traveling is this dry shampoo from Amika, their Perk Up Dry Shampoo. And there's just a little bit left in this one, so that one should not be a problem to finish. And lastly, I have a setting spray. This is from NYX. This is their Dewy Finish Setting Spray. And I definitely plan to put this one in my travel makeup bag because when I'm traveling, this is typically when I tend to use a setting spray the most because I want makeup to last throughout my fun day of adventures wherever I am. And that's how I plan to use this one up. And my last category of items that I want to focus on in 2024 are some eyeshadow palettes. So I have all of them here. I would love to have a pan in every single one of my eyeshadow palettes by the end of the year. And I only have a couple palettes that I need to hit pan on in order to do that. So I have first my Rose Quartz palette. I'm so close to hitting a pan in here in the shade that I've been working on, Cherish, for my Painless Eyeshadows project. So this one might have a pan on it before the year is up, but if it doesn't, I would like to hit a pan on it in 2024. Another palette without a pan is my BH Cosmetics Lost in Los Angeles palette, and this would be really fun to try and hit pan on one of these shades, maybe like in the springtime and just have fun with color. I don't know what my focus shade would be, but I'm sure I would enjoy working on any number of these. So that's another one that I'm gonna bring into a project at some point. The Natasha Denona My Dream palette I got this for Christmas last year and I absolutely love it, but I haven't brought it into any projects this year and haven't really been able to use it since like that first initial month when I first got it. So here's what it's looking like today. I think what I'm gonna do is just put these palettes in like a special category for my Panda's eyeshadows and take turns rolling them in throughout the course of the year and focusing on one of the shades in there. So I'm really looking forward to focusing on this palette and having fun with it because I love it so much. And I think this one might be one of the first ones that I focus on because it's such a beautiful winter palette in my opinion. I'm really excited to reach for this in January, February. Those are like what these shades scream to me. It would work in the spring as well, but I just love these like deeper cranberries, especially in the winter. Another palette that I've had for over a year and don't have much use on it at all still is the Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe palette. So I did get to play with this one a little bit during the most recent Halloween season. I brought it with me on my trip and did a get ready with me with this palette, but I would love to have a pan on this one as well before the year is up. And the last newbie in my collection is from Odin's Eye. This is their Jewels and Gem palette. And even though this one is only a couple months old in my collection, I don't wanna leave her out. I want her to have a pan on her as well before the next year is over. Just so that I can say I have a pan in every single palette. Won't that feel satisfying? In a similar vein, I have a few singles that I'd like to hit pan on. These are the last remaining Super Shock shadows in my collection that do not have a pan on them yet. This first shade is called Birthday Boy. It's actually really not transferring very well with my fingers. So that's something to consider as I work on these. That's kind of why I wanna work on them is to see if they still deserve a home in my collection, if they're still performing the way that they used to. And this one, uh, maybe not so much, but I'm gonna try hit pan on it and get to know it during that time and see what I can find out about it. I also would love to hit pan on this one here, Game Face. It's a really pretty copper shade. And this one too is just not swatching like it used to. Hmm but I love shades like this. So if I can get a pan on this one before I ultimately declutter it, that would just be great. And then I have one more. This one is called Crinkle and it's like kind of a silvery blue. And I've barely worn this shade at all, which is just all the better reason to try and focus on it and have some fun with it. It's actually a really pretty, almost like pewter gray, blue, silver shade. So that one would be fun to play with as well. And the last item that I'm gonna focus on for 2024 is my Pan That palette for the year. I am not like as committed to panning a palette for 2024, but of all the palettes that I could think of that I need to get use on and out of my collection, it's this one here, which is kind of bittersweet to say. This is the Shan XO Remix palette. The second one she came out with, it has two sides of nine shades each. There's this side. I already have a lot of pans in this palette, which is kind of one of the reasons I brought it in, but also it's really old. So here's the other side. This is 
because what came out with the remix, it used to just be all lipsticks in the version before this one. And I love pinks. I love the purple. I wish I had a shimmery purple in here, but these are all shades that I would wear on a regular basis. This one kind of feels more like summer fall to me. This side maybe more winter spring, so I might kind of break it up that way and divide my focus in that way. No way am I going to use up this palette entirely, and I'm not even going to try, but I'm going to get as much use on it as I can in 2024, see what progress I can make on it. I think I can definitely finish up a few of these shades entirely. Definitely the cream shade and maybe even some of them as blushes or highlights like this one but another reason I want to focus on this is because these shades especially the shimmers in here just do not perform the way they used to I find them to be quite chalky now when I try and use them and they're just not what I remember from this palette so it's time I think for this one to start phasing out of my collection and it is sad because this has kind of a sentimental place in my heart, but I'm gonna be really happy that it's getting the attention it deserves before I do ultimately declutter it soon. Kind of the same reason why I decided to pan my Lorac Makeup Pro 2 this year, and I really did enjoy that so much. I believe this palette came out in early 2017. If I remember correctly, it might've been 2016. So I've had it since it was released and that means I've had it for seven years. So it's gotten to the point where, you know, it might be time to focus on other things, get newer things in my collection. But we're gonna give this one one final hurrah in 2024, and hopefully you all will be there along with me to track the progress on this one during the next year. So that is all of the products that I plan to pan in 2024. I hope you're with me in the new year to follow along with all of these projects and watch me as I pare down my makeup collection and try and decrease my makeup inventory even further. Thank you so much for sticking around. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for being here. I really, really do appreciate it. And thank you each and every one of you for 4,000 subscribers. I can't believe I've gotten to this point. This was all just for fun. And I just love that you guys are here having fun with me and talking about makeup and encouraging each other not to buy things that we don't need and use what we already have and what we already love. I hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world. And I can't wait to see you in my next video. Until then, bye.